Hello and welcome to the Startup and Career Show, your destination for inspirational stories and real life experiences of startup founders and corporate leaders. I'm your host, Ushab, in conversation with a guest for today, Satyajit Kunjil, founder of Decimal, a micro savings and investing platform that enables young Indians to auto invest their spare change from online transactions into mutual funds or fixed return funds. This is his second venture. While he started in the agri tech space uh, earlier called as Grossfire and moved to Decimal. So Satyajit, a very warm welcome. Glad to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, Rishabh. Glad to be here. So Satyajit, let's begin. You know, can you talk about your journey all these years? Right from the time of your first startup, how did you move in that direction? Sure. So I actually come from an agrarian background uh, and that's where my journey started. I started with Pomp Grand Plantation back in 2009. Uh, shortly after that, uh, you know, experienced a lot of problems, uh, mainly revolving around the availability of water. And that's when I moved into research. Um, you know, I was looking at how uh, our Western counterparts are doing agriculture, how a couple of Scandinavian countries where water freezes for a, a long time for year are you know, utilizing water. And uh, it this was a journey from about 2011 to 2016. Uh, and 2017 was when I incorporated my agri-tech company, uh, Grosspire. And uh, I ran with that for about uh, three years. Uh, December of 2019 was when I exited. Uh, we got the first ever patent uh, for modular aquaponics uh, systems. Uh, that's a design and utility patent across the world and in India. And uh, yeah, it was it was a fulfilling journey. It's, uh, it's, it's something that uh, taught me so much. And uh, after that uh, is when in 2020, when Decimal happened. So what led you to move from agri-tech to fintech? You know, and a start decimal because that's an interesting, uh, you know, story. If I were to ask you, sure. So, um, I mean, my interest was always uh, in finance as well. So, I've done my CA, CFA uh, along with my tech uh, startup. Uh, when I was doing research, uh, you know, I was also studying on the side, um, but it was mainly from traditional finance. So, fintech as an industry was very, very new to me. Uh, it was right after I exited my previous startup. I was approached by a leading fintech company to come and join the strategy team, a company that had built significant amount of distribution and was looking at monetization. Um, but you know, I came from a traditional background, uh, traditional financial background, like I said. But fintech was completely new to me. That's when I just took some time to you know research about what has been India's fintech journey, what are the best case practices across the world, and that's when I came across some striking facts, primarily that. We're the youngest country in the world. So back in 2020, just between 18 to 28, we had 367 million kids, right? Uh, the entire population of the United States at that point was 330 million. So while this generation was extremely tech savvy, it was now transacting digitally, UPI had come in, uh, you know, they were still very ill-disciplined about their finances. So that was, uh, you know, that was a key moment where I said that, uh, you know, I found this to be an opportunity and something that I wanted to solve. Uh, and that's where uh, Decimal happened. So it was, uh, you know, not that I intended to go in with that, but uh, an opportunity presented itself. And, uh, you know, I just decided to jump at right at it. Wow, that, that's uh, quite fascinating, uh, you know, Satyajit. But uh, since the fact that you're targeting the young Indians, right? I mean, uh, because you're targeting uh, micro savings and all of that. So with respect to the topic that we, uh, you know, I wanted to discuss with you is uh, what's holding back young Indians from investing, you know, uh, and I'm sure I, as you mentioned, you've done your research as well before, before launching Decimal. So did you come across anything uh, related to uh, there is a fear of investing or money per se as it is? So is it the case that is there with all Indians or more so amongst the Gen Z's? Uh, so I think, uh, Rishabh, it's a, you know, it's an accumulation of several issues, uh, but let's talk about it from the start, right? The primary issue is that we're never really taught about money. If you look at, uh, you know, uh, the make of an Indian traditional family, right? It is uh, growing up, you know, our parents do not expose us to anything related to money. Sex and money become very taboo topics in Indian households. Sex is something that we never discuss. Money is something that our parents take care of for us, right? Uh, it's it's a very uh, you know a typical scenario, and I think every household where parents say that you know how many struggle kiya hai, 
right uh up to you uh you know this is your this thing our parents probably were were, were actually that fortunate generation uh i and, and it's it's not a blanket statement but for most is i think our parents uh you know growing up in the 70s 80s had a much more tougher time i think the economy opened up uh, the opportunities opened up we were probably the first generation uh with such a wide spread uh, access to internet right uh, so our parents definitely saw it uh, much tougher right uh, and and because they saw it much tougher they wanted to uh, i think i think it's that thing of always making it easier for uh, you know your children so let's look at how we're really brought up right uh, so let's compare it between uh, say an american child and an indian child right uh, so let's say you want to buy a toy right what is these of questions that actually come into your mind right uh, say i want to buy a remote control car right so i will think should ask my mother should ask my father right uh, if if the decision is i have to ask my father then i have to think okay which day of the week is my father going to be in a good mood right mai saturday ko puchunga if he's a cricket fan if sachin scored a century today is in a good mood i will ask him right and let's look at an american kid of what he does right um, because the cost of labor is so high in america not everyone can afford a house help right so i mean a american kid gets a dollar for every time he or she does the dishes gets a dollar for every time he or she does the mop uh, you know mows the lawn so if he or she wants to buy a remote control car he or she is going to think hey i'm going to do these three chores right and i'm going to do them you know through the week I'm going to save about 10 15 dollars i'm going to buy that remote control car right uh, on a saturday for us we're really thinking in terms of manipulation and emotions right and not really thinking in terms of money what this does is psychologically it builds it up right now let's take these kids 15 20 years ahead right say you know you watched zindagi na milegi dobara right and now want to take a trip with your friends right you go back to and at 20 21 probably don't have a stream of income or even if you're uh, you know doing some freelance projects you've not saved up enough to probably afford a trip right uh, or you want to buy an iphone anything right you again go back to should ask my mother should ask my father right but for an american kid if you look at uh, the person flipping burgers at mcdonalds is a student right the librarian uh, you know in a school is a student right or in a college tutors are students right for us the librarian is a retired probably uh, and and retired old lady right uh, you know who is fond of books so that's what the difference is that american kid again is going to say i'm going to work on minimum wage for 6 months right save up this much and go to europe but for an uh, indian kid right it is to ask my father to ask my mother right uh, so this is where it uh, and and it's not that the exposure is any less or the opportunities are any less right it's not a difference of opportunity it's not a difference it's simply a difference of psychologically how have we been trained right we take up responsibilities very later in uh, much later in life right uh, for most american kids right and i i, I know i'm making generalized uh, statements but for most american kids right student debt is the way to study forward right for most indian kids parents fund is the way to study forward right so that is i think primarily where the difference comes in we're not really taught about money we're not thinking in terms of money right from a very young age so when you start earning your uh, you know when, when you're in your first job and you've probably got in your first salary right i think that initial bit of splurging spending that entire amount right it's much later or at least a couple of months uh, you know at best if not uh, a, a little over a year is when some sort of responsibility or thought process around how can i manage this better kicks in for you to actually start implementing is a couple of years more down the line right um, i mean if you look at india's investment penetration the number varies from about 2% to 5% but it's somewhere in that range 5% of indians only invest right uh, 1.7% another stat is 1.7% of indians uniquely hold one mutual fund right now is there a higher amount of the population that has the intent has the resources 
has the capability to invest i feel certainly right but what really holds them back it's the financial illiteracy uh you know in our country i talk to so many people uh as as a part of research as a part of my work i talk to so many people right the problem starts from the difference between simple interest and compound interest right they think that the money in their savings account is more than enough right and it can stay there and the entire uh, they can sustain their entire lifestyle so i think it starts from very very basic things um, so i think i think on a it it requires a change over you know it's it can't be a cosmetic change it can't just be uh, you know a couple of fintech apps coming in i think uh, it requires a change uh, you know there are a lot of people that actually are rooting for financial education of some sort right to come into the uh, formal education system uh, and 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 hopefully that is something that will get inculcated soon and and you know we can see a change on a much more um you know fundamental level i think uh, satesh is very well articulated because you you're correct because that's and india has got a huge population and only you know 5% on a higher side are the ones who investing uh, properly so to speak uh, and, and the remaining don't it's not that people don't have money right uh, but uh, and illiteracy financial illiteracy is a major cause completely in sync with you but tell me uh, as you mentioned right that our upbringing has a bigger role to play or uh, you know the way we perceive the finance uh, spectrum but why is the average indian adult reluctant to take such charge right uh, in your experience is there a gap between intent and action if i were to ask you because the young indians is it it's not that they are not aware of anything right they are as global as possible they know everything especially with uh, the social media the world has opened up so what is uh, you know your, your research or your experience talking about it i uh, so what i feel is uh, there isn't a lack of intent uh, amongst young indians or indians in general to invest um you know if you stop any 21 year old on the road and if you ask him or her whether you know one should invest everyone says yes the ball drops when you know if you ask them that do they do it right uh, so i don't feel that there's a gap, uh, you know there's a lack of intent however there is a massive gap between intent and action uh, again where this stems from is that part of financial illiteracy right uh, investing is a complicated world uh, let's say you know we've built so many great apps right uh, and okay so let's take for example if you have used any of the investing apps right uh, built if you open it up the first thing that you're going to see is a graph right it shows you open it up to any script it'll show you a graph it'll tell you what uh, it'll tell you xrr three year return five year return expense ratio now look at the number of engineers designers doctors that we keep graduating every year right these are people who have absolutely no idea about any of this right a lot of commerce students a lot of uh, you know financial students also do not understand this uh, to a large extent they might think they do right now as soon as say you know there's there's, there's a person who does not come from a financial background who sees this as the first screen closes it opens up google right and types xrr right and reads internal uh, you know analyze internal rate of return right you basically communicated that this is not a world for you right what we do not understand we fear right now what is the alternative for these people to start investing go to a fund manager right what is it that fund managers make right you should always follow the money to understand the uh, you know uh, the intent fund managers will make about 100 to at max 150 basis points right uh, that's about 1 1.5% now if you if i'm making 1% right i have only so much amount of time right personally that i can invest in a client right so there's only so many number of clients that i can service if you look at all of the wealth houses right and look at the events that they sponsor you will never see anyone sponsoring a college fest right the college students uh, in their graduation post graduation can invest uh, 18 plus but you'll never see them sponsoring a college fest they sponsor events like picky nascom cifs right they basically want 10 people who will invest 50000 1 lakh rupees with them right no one wants so 
if I have someone who's doing a 50,000 rupee SIP with me, right? Then I'm going to make 1% of that. Alternatively, if I'm catering to a student, which might to create the portfolio to there's there's a certain amount of time, might be similar amount of time investment for a fund manager, right? Or for a wealth manager. If the student, because of uh, you know lower income bracket, just starting off, probably risk uh, capable uh, you know capacity is much lower. Might start with an SIP of say two thousand rupees, five thousand rupees, right? Making one percent of that five thousand rupees, right? Is it really in his best interest to service that student today? Right? It's not. So he will continue serving, looking for CXO profiled people who would invest, who have a higher capacity to invest. So this option is not available to the students. And when you do it on your own, right, it's you you fear the entire thing. So that's so it's not in it's not a problem of intent. It is the gap between intent to action. And that's where we are trying to bridge it. Right. Uh, so so that's where uh, the the exact point where we as decimal sit. Wow, this is incredible, uh, you know, uh, Satyajit, because the way you've explained, and, and that's where the problem lies, right? Uh, but tell me, uh, and I'm sure your research would have, would have explained you, uh, you know, uh, much more, but can you talk about some of the myths associated with investing, you know, that uh, people are reluctant to invest, as you mentioned earlier? Yeah, so I think uh, two main uh, false notions that create uh, get created, right, uh, is we always talk about investing. If you look at all of the marketing around investing, right? It is invest so your retirement is better. Invest to buy that dream home. Uh, what it does is it creates two false notions. One is at 21, if you tell me invest for so your retirement is better, right? I think I'm going to retire at 60, right? 60, 65. There's a lot of time, right? I can always start much later. Or if you tell me, invest to buy a dream home, right? No one's dream home is worth 10 lakhs, right? It's at least worth a crore. Now, that's a lot of money. I make 15, 20, 30,000 rupees as my starting salary, right? So how much after my expenses uh, and everything, I can probably put aside about 5,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees at max, right? That's a, that's a very small to make it to one crore, right? So investing is for the bigger things. So it requires a lot of money to get started, right? So these are the two main false notions that get created in the minds of young Indians, uh, which also holds them back or rather delays the process of getting started. So uh, where also Desmond is uh, trying to solve that problem is we're trying to, we're not saying that, you know, through micro investments, we're going to fund your retirement or through micro investments, you will be able to buy the dream home in about five, six years, right? Uh, we're solving a very, very basic premise. And that is to get started in the simplest way, right? Starting is half the journey one, right? I mean, we complicate this so much with so many questions of kitna paisa dalna chahiye, kaise diversify karna chahiye, what is this, this is not this thing, talk to 10 friends, talk to that uncle, uh, friendly uncle who'll uh, give you advice, right? Um, and we just complicate it so much that we just don't end up starting, right? The starting part comes in much later in life, in your late 20s, in your early 30s, and is generally, uh, you know, uh, triggered through an emotional event, right? Say you get married, a certain realization of responsibilities, right? Um, you know, uh, if, if there's an unfortunate uh, uh, event of, uh, you know, say someone's fallen unwell and, and, and you just realize and the money that I was making on it, uh, you know, through my salary, through everything, probably was not, uh, or probably those savings has just been, um, you know, eroded uh, completely. Um, I mean, you know, um, again, an unverified uh, stat, but somewhere I read that forty percent of Indians are one medical bill away from poverty. Right. Um, a lot of our, in, not just investment, our insurance penetration in India is uh, very, very low. Right. A lot of people do not have basic health insurance. Um, you know, my father suffered, uh, grandfather uh, went through a prolonged uh, spell of illness. And I saw the amount of money that uh, was required, right? Um, and uh, very, very grateful to my father that, uh, you know, we had medical insurance to cover all of that. But uh, without the medical insurance, I don't know how we as a family 
come from a very uh, you know a, a typical middle class family we don't know how we would have been able to foot those uh, medical bills right uh, and and then the option but you know at that point you're not thinking uh, that you know oh i don't have money i can't afford the treatment so i won't get in the treatment right then you will pull money from wherever possible right pick up any loan possible and then that just is that sinkhole that you keep seeping deeper and deeper into uh, so i think uh, you know when we talk about financial help uh, investment is one part of it a major part of it insurance there are multiple facets to it right uh, which i don't think we're really really exposed to or we really understand uh, you know these things uh, very well uh, as, especially uh, parents always you know want to protect you and keep you away from this uh, but they end up handicapping us right uh, so uh, you know these things come much later in life and uh, i think that's a major disadvantage uh, that we play with uh, so uh, very grateful for the love that uh, indian parents give their children but uh, i think it needs to be coupled with a little bit of realism and practicality absolutely uh, you know satyajit you're bang on on this because this is exactly the problem i completely agree and i think i've seen even the you know the newer parents also uh, fall into the same trap right where they spoon feed their children a lot more than required i completely uh, agree with you on that but uh, tell me uh, with respect to decimal right i mean what you said is your encouraging people to at least start take the first step which is possibly the biggest thing out of fear that people don't take so help me how the ecosystem works with decimal uh, because i remember uh, you know going through your uh, platform and all and it appears that somebody invests certain percent uh, you know somebody spends certain money and the balance goes uh, into the investment so how does that ecosystem work if you can help us understand yeah so a very simple concept right uh, say you buy a cup of coffee uh, it costs you about 45 rupees uh, you pay by any digital medium you can pay by your google pay paytm any of your upi apps or swipe your card the amount getting deducted from your account is rounded up to the nearest 10 so in this case 50 rupees will get deducted 45 rupees will go towards the coffee and the additional 5 rupees is invested in your pf in mutual funds so at any given point any transaction that you do right uh, say you left from home you filled fuel uh, you know you got a cup of coffee uh, you ordered lunch you went out for another coffee with your friends where probably went for a movie later in the night so all of these transactions 4 5 10 15 15 rupees keep getting invested on your behalf uh so one thing we realized was you know yes there is fear um you know and there is that entire notion that i need a lot of money uh there is the entire notion of i do not understand this right so we just went on to see okay what does young india do very well right uh and uh, an overwhelming uh, answer on that was spending right so we said okay cool let's connect it to spending uh and you know let's integrate this as a part of their lifestyle right uh, so one thing during also building decimal we were very very particular about was we did not want to change user behavior uh, to a large extent right so we wanted to automate the entire process we wanted to integrate this with your lifestyle and you know which is why we say that those 4 5 rupees are not probably not buying you your dream home right but if you invest that 10 rupees right and that 10 rupees will never it it might never happen that the 10 becomes 50 right but if that 10 becomes 11 with your own money once you've seen that practically with your own money right i think that's when the mind starts churning and asking questions where does 10000 then become 11000 right and that's uh, that's the spark that you need right and and that's where you get started wow this is this is uh, very interesting because you know changing the habit is the biggest thing and in india people are used to upi like anything you know and and yeah. everywhere you go and uh, uh, you know you have these facilities now the interesting thing is people don't even realize right i mean whether they had paid 45 rupees for a coffee or 50 didn't matter to them then right at least the 5, 5 rupees got uh, invested and hence the power of compounding kicks in over a period of time and those Correct. little sums actually uh, forms the habit over a period of time so i think this is this is phenomenal but uh, you know i i was interested when i came across a feature called as gold card right now can you talk about it a little more because how does it help people in achieving their financial goals because as you mentioned in the beginning having a goal of buying a property or a car or a international trip and all requires huge sums of money right but your feature does enable in some form at least 
help people think in that direction. So can you talk a little more about Gold Card specifically? Sure. So um, Gold Card basically is just a feature where you can set a goal. Um, you know, um, what we also realized was that I think just uh, for a certain, uh, you know, section of people just investing without any goal in mind or to say that, you know, this is, uh, you know, just some money that I put aside and might be required for something else was, you know, lacking a little bit of motivation. So it's just, I got this feature called uh, Goal Cut, which uh, is say, you know, you want to save for an iPhone and, uh, you know, say it's your birthday in December and you want to gift yourself an iPhone, uh, cost you about, say, 60, 70,000 rupees. Um, so you say that, okay, I need 70,000 rupees on the 25th of December, right? Uh, so what the feature does uh, is it scans through your transaction history. It scans through your spending habits and says that, okay, if you, instead of rounding up to the same, uh, to the nearest 10, if we start rounding up to the nearest 50, right? We will save 50,000 rupees, 60,000 rupees by December uh, 25th, right? Uh, and then, you know, you can start saving towards that goal. Um, it's it's not a hundred percent accurate, of course, because your behavior might change and it's completely dependent on that. But um, you know, say instead of sixty thousand rupees, you only ended up with fifty thousand rupees, right? You missed your goal by ten thousand. You were going to buy that iPhone either way, right? Uh, on on the twenty fifth of December, probably you might have to take out about sixty thousand from your savings account and put it there or put it on EMI. Here, if you've gotten that fifty thousand rupees that you saved without knowing anything or you know completely uh you know in the background and now you just have to put in ten thousand rupees i don't think that ten thousand pinches a lot right uh, so it's something that enables uh you know people to see the value of um you know putting uh saving money investing money right uh probably that you put out fifty thousand rupees probably that fifty thousand rupees also become fifty two fifty three thousand rupees and you know you've gotten that additional two three thousand rupees uh that is aided uh in in buying that iphone so so that's what uh, that feature does uh it's it's something that uh, you know in a short term uh makes you look forward to oh and that this actually gives uh gratification right uh, so if Correct. you were to achieve that i think that that forms a habit uh so this is incredible but uh, tell Correct. me there are, there are so many people who have fears uh, of equity investment right uh, they say, what if uh, if I were to invest in a fixed deposit, I know at least my principal will be protected. I'll get some 5%, 6% uh, interest. That's okay. But what in stock market, what happens? You know, it, it can completely go crashing down and all. However, the history, if you were to look at it, even for the from a long-term investment standpoint, people who've invested and stayed invested even during the downturn, they are still in a better position than they would have invested in an FD, right? So how how do you explain uh, this situation, especially to the young guys? So I think uh, I think this stems primarily from the fact of, um, you know, one is a complete lack of understanding of inflation, right? Uh, you know, um, we've I've, I've tried to simplify this uh, as, as much as possible. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's really not a complicated topic, inflation. It simply just means that, you know, if, a, you know, there's tea worth 10 rupees today, and if I have 100 rupees in my pocket, and, you know, I go and I can buy 10 cups of chai, uh, but tomorrow milk will get a little more, milk will go up by 2 rupees, sugar will go up by 2 rupees, the salary of the person serving you will go up by about 7-8%. So all of this might cost, you know, and make that tea next year, 20 rupees. If I just keep this 100 rupee note in my pocket and I go again next year, I'm just going to get five cups of tea, right? That difference of five cups less that I'm getting simply is inflation. Uh, inflation in India has been at about, uh, you know, ranging between four to six, seven percent. Um, you, from your FT after tax, the return that you get does not even beat inflation. So even to basically maintain the lifestyle that you're leading, right uh you are losing money uh so i think i think a clear understanding of inflation uh is lacking amongst uh, most people right uh, again stems from the fact of entire financial illiteracy uh so that is one major part that plays in and i think the second part is it's the generation that is looking to make a quick buck right um if you bet on good stocks if you you know or just take uh, positions in equity mutual funds, equity-backed mutual funds. And if 
the good scripts right over a long term period because businesses also take time to build right so th and that is your stock price is a reflection of how well that business is doing right certain plans are put in place uh, for businesses which are not one month two month plan right there are businesses have five year plans businesses have 10 year plans and it takes time to achieve those things right in the short term however there might be ups and downs with those businesses and that is reflected again in your uh, share price so the price in a short term might be volatile it might go down it might go up right but over a long uh, you know a long term horizon over a 5 10 year horizon you will see that the graph right even if in short term goes up and down but long term it's going up so i think if we look at uh, you know if we're committed to creating wealth right uh, if you know you have the patience to do that if you look at it from a long term uh, spectrum i think uh, equity investments is a must however of course uh, one should always diversify that portfolio right but um, you know even if however small however big uh, you know one should diversify that portfolio and i think there are a lot of mutual funds if uh, you know you don't want to bet on individual stocks there are a lot of mutual funds that give you that option right uh, if you can put aside 1000 rupees or you can put aside 1 lakh rupees do not put it all in one stock right uh, or do not put it all in one mutual fund either right uh, take that uh, 10000 rupees split it probably into three to four uh, scripts right uh, put 2.5 2.5 thousand uh, in each or put 5000 in one uh, 2000 1000 however you want to split it right uh, whatever is the risk assessment of a person. So diversification, I completely agree with. Uh, you probably do want to have some portion allocated to debt. Um, if you're if you're in your early twenties, uh, please have you know a smaller portion allocated to debt. You you can take long term bets. Of course, if um, you know uh, I built my uh, father's portfolio, which has a slightly uh, you know even allocation to debt and uh, equity. Right. Uh, so at this age. Uh, you, you you need probably a little bit of uh, stability uh, as well, right? Uh, the horizon is not extremely long term. So I think uh, one needs to do this entire assessment, but uh, the entire thing about, uh, you know, stock market, I think this comes from uh, lack of knowledge uh, more than, uh, you know, more than uh, personal experience or uh, practical experience. And uh, I think, uh, you know, lack of knowledge uh, can only be, uh, you know, fought with increase of knowledge. So I think it, again, stems down to the first topic that we spoke about, which was a financial illiteracy. Well, absolutely, uh, Satya, just spot on. But, uh, you know, the thing is, uh, while you're facing a challenge of making the people literate about financial goals and all of that, right, uh, you're also setting up business, expanding it and all of that. Right. So can you talk about more on those lines as well uh, as a startup founder? What are the challenges that you're facing? Because you have dual challenges, not just about your startup, but also about educating people at the same time. Right. So how are you, uh, you know, uh, managing these things? And if you can share some other challenges that you faced uh, while setting it up. Sure. So, I mean, uh, you know, like any business, uh, I think a significant amount of uh, ups and downs. While in established uh, businesses, the ups and downs might be uh, per quarter. Uh, for us, uh, I think uh, we go on a high and then we go uh, hit rock bottom and then come back up uh, multiple times in a day. Uh, but uh, I think uh, that's what the excitement is all about. Um, I think uh, it, it's it's a conscious decision, of course, to start this, uh, to embark on this uh, path, and and you know, uh, no regrets there. Um, but yes, I think uh, the funding winter, uh, you know, that has been uh, going around for a year now, a, a little longer than a year, is something that has affected us as well. Uh, you know, that that is something that uh, is is a major challenge that we faced. Uh, building a product like Decimal, investing micro investments in mutual funds was something that was never done before, uh, right in in the country. Of course, there is, uh, you know, there are. Uh, a lot of good companies that have come up in this space, um, but all of them over the last two, three years, right? So there was no precedence which was set. Uh, creating something in such a highly regulated 
uh, space, right? Creating a new business model, creating a new, completely new business um, was challenging. Uh, it of course came with its, um, you know, regulatory compliance issues uh, for us to build that out, right? Uh, investing below 500 rupees in equity mutual funds was never possible in India before this. Uh, you know, bringing that down to a minimum investment of 10 rupees was something that took us over about two years. Uh, so, so those were certain challenges from a product standpoint uh, also that we faced. But um, yeah, I think uh, very grateful to have, uh, you know, overcome most of those challenges, uh, you know, some very satisfactorily, some uh, just scraping through. And uh, yeah, we launched the product on 26th of December uh, last year. And uh, I think, uh, you know, um, we've been very, very grateful for the kind of response uh, that we've gotten uh, over the past uh, six, seven months now. Wow, this is incredible, uh, Satyajit. But I want to uh, ask you one more question on the regulatory side of things, because you said earlier investing below 500 was not possible. So how did you take up that? Because this is the essence of a founder, right? He, he sees yeah. an opportunity. There's a challenge. He tries to solve for it, not just keep his hand waiting. So what did you do there? Yeah, so I mean, um, the investing below 500 rupees was not a regulatory challenge. Uh, it's not something that, uh, you know, uh, SEBI uh, uh, forbid. It was something that, uh, so again, to process any investment, right, uh, there is a cost associated to it uh, at the AMC side, at the distributor side, which is facilitating this transaction. So when we bought it down, uh, you know, if, if you're doing 500 rupees, you know, it was something that made sense to invest the entire processing cost. Uh, now, if you do 10 rupees, if you do 1 rupee, right, probably from a unit economic uh, level at that point, it might not make sense. Uh, so what we've done is, uh, you know, we've spent a good 24 months just working and bringing our costs down, right? Fundamentally, I think it always came down to, for us uh, at least, you know, I think that part of coming from a, traditional financial background does help in this case is uh, we understand we I mean we look at business in a very very traditional way as well right uh, it is sales whatever you sell minus your cost is your profit right um, we knew that it will take time for the revenues to go up right and be significant so it was in that period how do you bring your costs down right and make it manageable uh, where uh, we're not looking at uh, you know we're not profitable uh, today but, uh, you know, there is a clear path at least uh, to profitability. So I think that was the biggest uh, challenge that, uh, you know, we faced, uh, you know, leading up to today. Wow, this, this is incredible, uh, Satyajit. Uh, but uh, tell me, uh, what are your expansion plans now? Now that you've got a product in place, uh, you've got people investing, you've got phenomenal response from so-called the young generation because these are the people every brand is targeting as well, right? So you've been yeah. able to do that. So now what are the next steps? That you want to take. Yeah, so I think uh, when we launched on the 26th of uh, December, we were, uh, you know, the entire across the platform, we were investing about uh, four, four and a half thousand rupees. Uh, to today, uh, you know, we've, we're investing close to about 13 lakh rupees uh, on an average per day. Uh, so that's the kind of growth that uh, we've seen over the last uh, six months, uh, which has completely been uh, driven organically, uh, you know, and uh, but now we're actually going into our first big marketing campaign. Uh, that we're planning to launch at the end of this month. Uh, it's it's an influencer-led campaign, uh, you know, where, uh, so we were working the last six months. We also wanted to see, you know, uh, it's a product that we've built at scale. What is the kind of response that we're getting? What is the kind of, uh, you know, issues that people are still facing, right? Um, so again, we built it from, there are certain scenarios that when you're building a product, you cannot even imagine, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's only, uh, it, it, it'll be such an edge case where a, a user has uh, done something which we never even thought of, right? Uh, but uh, it, it, it makes sense. So, so these were a couple of uh, learnings that we really wanted to uh, get from our users, um, you know, and once we've done that, I think we're now significantly confident uh, in how the product plays out certain partnerships also that we were waiting on the mutual fund piece uh, primarily. So now that all of that is in place, uh, I think, uh, you know, it seems like an option time uh, to do Decimal's first ever uh, big marketing campaign. And uh, yeah, that's the first uh, marketing campaign that we're all uh, as a team gearing up for. And uh, we're hoping to, you know, launch that uh, by the end of the month. 
wow, awesome, awesome. Satyaji, I think you have something on to really big. You know, I look forward to that. But uh, you know, before you before you leave, one last question. Uh, you know, any last advice you want to give to the potential startup founders? So I think uh, you know my advice, and I uh, strongly, strongly believe this is uh, uh, the next decade at least uh, belongs to India. I think uh, it, the amount of opportunities, right? Uh, the level of disruption that's happening, the amount of opportunities that's uh, that are coming. Uh, that are available, uh, you know, and uh, I think we have some of the smartest minds. Um, I think we have a market that's, uh, you know, the biggest now in the world. Uh, we've overtaken China in terms of uh, population as well. Uh, so I think um, there's there's never been a better time uh, to start, uh, you know, uh, and yeah, I think uh, one should just go for it today. Absolutely. You you just have to be brave, and yeah, I think I think uh, you know at the end of that uh, moment of braveness uh, is 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 greatness. So even if uh, you know uh, some might win, some might uh, fail, uh, you know, but uh, I think you walk away from a journey like this extremely fulfilled. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on that note, uh, thank you, Satyajit, for taking out time today. It was lovely speaking to you, you know, and I think we wish you all the good luck. You're onto something really big because you're changing the habit by facilitating and simplifying investments, right? And, and uh, you're making it very simple. I think kudos to you and your team for building this product. Thank you so much, Rishabh. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. Thank you to all our listeners as well for joining us today. And we see you soon. Bye-bye.